Hi, today I thought I would show you what I have now got to do in order to do wound maintenance on the leg. Now, the reason they've got me doing this is because Christmas is coming up and they want the dressings changed daily, but there will be a certain few days when the district nursing team are closed. So here is what I've got to do. If you don't want to see, I suggest you stop the video now. This is all I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to show you the whole wound dressing procedure that I've been taught how to do, including what the infection sites look like at the moment. So please stop the video now if you don't want to watch. Right, so I've got this bundle of equipment here. So to start with, I have got a wound dressing pack. Now this gets opened up once I've got rubber gloves on and it's got a little tray where I can put the iodine and it's got some cotton wool buds and various things and it opens all out onto a, tr onto a tray and I will put it where my leg's going to be so that the whole area is sterile. I've also got some sterile scissors which I have to I have to use them more than once but I've been told to not touch them when I'm not using the glove wearing the gloves and to keep them in this pack in between. I've also got this little uh, q-tip thing and it's it's a stick with a cotton bud on one end a measure measure on, on it so that's how they measure the width and the depth of a wound and it's got just a wooden stick on the other end and that's the end I use to pack the goes into the um, wound. Actually, gauze. She didn't give me any gauze. Then I'm going to have to go and see if I've got some. And then I've got two types of uh, wipes. I've got one that helps me take the dressing off and one that preps my skin before they put the new one on because I have to be careful with all the peeling off and peeling on. And then I've got the two dressings that I'm going to put on the leg one where the stitch came out and one where the infection site still is. And then the rubber gloves. I'm gonna go and find some gauze. Lucky for me, I have got a leg repair kit with a lot of stuff that I've collected along the way. And I do have some gauze swab in the pack. Now she's shown me how to cut it. I've got to cut it in strips in a certain direction because in one direction it has tautness and the other direction it frays. So I've got to make sure I cut it the right way. Anyway. I think I've got everything here now, so I'm going to get started. Now, we are on tank water here, so in order to sterilise the water, this is water I'm just going to swab the area with to clean it out once I've pulled all the packing out, and this has been boiled and cooled so that it's sterile. Right, hand sanitizer. clean my hands, and then let's get started. So we start with the removal wipes. Uh, adhesive remover. And then we're going to take the two dressings off first. So, let's see how we go. It's a bugger getting these corners, it really is. Especially when I can't feel it on my own leg. Okay, there we go. We got it. So the adhesive remover just helps protect the skin so we don't peel any layers off and it doesn't hurt. And it's quite tricky down here because I can't actually see the end. But it came off relatively easily. There we go. So that's the stitch. Then we take the other one off. Peel. There we go. It's quite sensitive here on the inside of my leg here. Most of the rest of it I can't actually feel. But this little bit, it does smart a bit. There we go. Got that one off. All right, number two. Okay, what do we need next? The dressing pack. I think it's got tweezers in it. 
So we open the dressing pack and then we get the rubber gloves. Now she's told me not to touch the gloves unless um, I'm as little as possible. So I'm just gonna pull one out of there. Oh, I've got two, excellent. And you've got to sort of try and keep your hands off them as much as you can. So there's a pair of gloves, marvellous. Right, seal those up for next time. Okay, so we've done that and we've done that. We need the scissors. Probably opened them the wrong way around, but anyway, we'll turn them around that way. Okay, and I also need the dressing pack. So the dressing pack looks like this. So it opens out like that, and it's got a little couple of pairs of tweezers. Oh, there's some gauze in here. Look at that. And some cotton buds like that. So what we do with it is it goes there and my leg goes over the top and then that is to mop up the excess and we put a little bit of the iodine into one of those holes. But first I am going to take the top layer of this off like that and we need to take the packing out of here because it's been packed in yesterday so I might actually wet it that might help soak it with a bit of water that's why I have the towel And we're just gonna mop it around, mop it around like that. And then see if we can get this gauze to come out. There we go, got it, got it. So that comes out of the hole like so. And the other one now this was iodine filled when we put it in yesterday and now it's all gone white. So that means that the iodine has been soaked into the skin and it's time to change it. And there's a little bit on this stitch at the front as well, which also needs to come off because there's a little bit of depth in, in that stitch, which we didn't think there was before. So yeah. So we just mop that around. I'm gonna use another one and a bit more water, a little bit more water. Mop it around like so. Oh, oh, on the floor. Can't use that one. Dang it. It's all right, got three more. Now I'm going to show you these wounds close up. They look pretty clean. So are we ready? I'm not going to touch the camera with the with my hand. I'm not going to use my left hand either. So there is the wound. So it's looking pretty clean. And there's the one around the end. It's looking pretty clean. I've got it there. Yeah just trying to minimize the amount of contact I have with other things right so then we tip the iodine in to the little container now I've only got a limited amount of this stuff and it goes into one of these little holes here I'm 
don't need too much. So there's the iodine. Then we get the scissors. And we are going to cut the gauze in a certain direction. So I think if it's stretchy, we don't cut that way. I have a feeling it's that way. So let's see. So we need little strips like that. And she told me to check by pulling. There we go, perfect. So this goat gets dipped into the iodine, like so. And then we swab it off with the towel and then it goes in the hole. Now, what I think is that that's probably a bit thick. So I might cut a bit off. I'm sure I'll get better at this the more I do it. Right. So, use a different pair this time. So this gets shoved in the hole. Um, where's my stick? Need to find my stick. There it is there. So I'm just going to put that down a second. Right, so this is what they use to measure de the depth of wounds with. So it's got measurement on it and it's also got a Q-tip on one end, but I don't want the Q-tip because that will drag apparently against the gauze. I want this end. So here's the gauze and it gets shoved in the hole. Now this one actually goes over off to the side a little bit. So I've got to make sure I get it all in. There we go. And then we cut off the excess. We can use the same little strip and go again. And dab off the extra. Then we put this in the hole here. So it goes in this hole. Like that. Now this one is a lot less deep than the other one, actually, to be honest. Um, which surprises me. And then we cut off the excess. So that stays there and it has an upside sticks over it. Um, just gonna do the other one, the third one. So I might actually cut a new piece of gauze because that looks a bit thick. So this one's a little tiny one. This is the stitch one. So I'm gonna just cut a little really thin strip of this. really thin strip stick it in the iodine mop it off and then pop it in the hole now I've got to make sure this one gets in because it's quite shallow but there is some depth to it and this does sting a little bit but that's all right and then she said fold it over like so with as little contact with my skin, but with my hands as I possibly can. And then we cut that one off. Right, so that is all the packing done. I'm just gonna put that over there. Now, we put the wound dressings on. So, the, these are upside. Where did they go? There they are upsides so these dressings are waterproof but i do put some extra tegaderm over the top when i go swimming and they're double layered so we've got a layer on the back and a layer on the top that comes off afterwards so we'll start with this one here now i've got to put the skin prep on first because we need to make sure we kind to the skin so this is just a little bit of that just gets wiped around just to be kind to the skin and we have to sort of let that dry for a moment. There we go. Leave it to dry. Doesn't hurt. It did before. If she'd have asked me to do this a few weeks ago, there is no way that I could have done this. 
but I prefer this than have to sit around half my day and wait for district nurses to come round. Obviously, we're going to have to have them come and check it every now and again. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I do it one day, she does it one day, I don't know. We'll see how it works out. So I'm doing them on Saturday and Sunday, and then she's going to come around and look at it on Monday. So this has got a one and a two on the back. So we peel one off. There's a tab at the side, so I can keep keep a hold of it. So we peel that off. So there's tabs at the side, and then it goes on straight over the top like that. Now it looks quite wrinkly because there's an extra layer that comes off on the top. So we just use hand heat for a few minutes just to keep it get it stuck down, and it will stick better once I've peeled the top layer off. So. We peel the top off and then it looks like that. Perfect. One more. And that's my little baby outside. Where did that one go? I lost it. <coughs> it's over there. My baby outside. This is, goes on this one here, around here. So, ooh, uh, you see how much rubbish gets generated by one dressing change, honestly. It's just incredible. So I'm gonna put this one on there, okay? And it's going to go kinda in that position. There we go. Hold it on, a bit of warm heat, hand heat, that sort of thing. And then we peel it off. That's it, it's done. Now, what I will do is I will stick Tegaderm over the top of that to keep those dressings on when I go swimming, because I'm going swimming in a minute. But let me just take this all off and show you how much wastage is created by one dressing change just to keep everything sterile. Let me show you. Now, the scissors, I, I will cl uh, keep the scissors. They will go into the pack and stay in there but everything else has to go in the bin. So that is a dressing change. Um, it's quite involved in order to make sure you keep everything sterile. I am very careful about that. And I've got another one to do tomorrow and another bag of goodies right here to help me with that. And then the nurse will come out on Monday and we'll see how it's looking. The uh, reason we've gone back to iodine is because the wound was healing faster when it, we, we were using iodine than we were when we were going too daily and we used something different. So that's what I got to do every day to keep this leg healing better. Hopefully we can get discharged maybe January perhaps from district nursing.